This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Annie Coleman in St. Louis, Missouri, in March 2006. Ulysses by James Joyce. Chapter 8, Part 2. Grafton Street, gay with housed awnings, lured his senses. Muslin prints, silk dames and dowagers, jingle of harnesses, hoof thuds low ringing in the baking causeway. Thick feet that woman has in the white stockings, hope the rain mucks them up on her. Country bred chaw bacon, all the beef to the heels we're in, always gives a woman clumsy feet. Molly looks out of plum. He passed, dallying the windows of brown Thomas, silk mercers, cascades of ribbons, filmsy, flimsy china silks, a tilted urn poured from its mouth a flood of blood-hued poplin, lustrous blood. The Huguenots brought that here. La causa e santa, terra, terra. Great chorus that, terri, terra, must be washed in rainwater, mire beer. Terra bum 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 pin cushions. I'm a long time threatening to buy one, sticking them all over the place. Needles and window curtains. He bared slightly his left forearm. Scrape, nearly gone. Not today, anyhow. Must go back for that lotion. For her birthday, perhaps. June, July, August, September eighth. Nearly three months off. Then she mightn't like it. Women won't pick up pins. Say it cuts low. Gleaming silks, petticoats on slim brass rails, rays of flat silk stockings. Useless to go back. Had to be. Tell me all. High voices, sun-warm silk, jingling harnesses, all for a woman, home and houses, silk webs, silver, rich fruits, spike, spicy from Jaffa. Agendeth nateum, wealth of the world, a warm human plumpness settled down on his brain. His brain yielded. Perfume of embraces all him assailed. With hungered flesh obscurely, he mutely craved to adore. Duke Street, here we are, must eat. The Burton. Feel better, then. He turned Combridge's corner, still pursued. Jingling, hoof-thuds, perfumed bodies, warm, full. All kissed, yielded and deep summer fields tangled pressed grass in trickling hallways of tenements along sofas, creaking beds. Jack, love, darling, kiss me, Reggie, my boy, love. His heart to stir, he pushed in the door of the Burton restaurant, stink gripping his trembling breath, pungent meat juice, slush of greens, see the animals feed. Men, men, men. Perched on high stools by the bar, hats shoved back at the tables, calling for more bread, no charge, swilling, wolfing, gobfuls of sloppy food, their eyes bulging, wiping wetted mustaches. A pallid, suet-faced young man polished his tumbler knife, fork and spoon with his napkin. New set of microbes. A man with an infant sauce-stained napkin tucked round him shovel it, shoveled gurgling soup down his gullet. A man spitting back on his plate, half-masticated gristle, gums, no teeth to chew, chew, chew it, chump, chomp from the grill, bolting to get it over, sad boozer's eyes, spitting off more than he can chew. Am I like that? See ourselves as others see us. Hungry man is an angry man. Working tooth and jaw. Don't. Oh, a bone. That last pagan king of Ireland, Cormac, in the school poem, choked himself at Slutty, southward of the Boyne. Wonder what he was eating. Something galoptious. St. Patrick converted him to Christianity. Couldn't swallow it all, however. Roast beef and cabbage. Once do. Smells of men, his gorge rose. Spat in sawdust, Swedish, warmish cigarette smoke, reek of plug, spilt beer, men's beery piss, the stale of ferment. Couldn't eat a morsel here. "'Fellow sharpening knife and fork to eat all before him. "'Old chap picking his tootles. "'Slight spasm, full chewing the cud. "'Before and after. "'Grace after meals. 
Look on this picture, then, on that, scoffing up stew gravy with sopping sippets of bread. Look it off the plate, man. Get out of this. He gazed round the stooled and tabled eaters, tightening the wings of his nose. Two stouts here. One corned and cabbage. That fellow ramming a knife full of cabbage down as if his life depended on it. Good stroke. Give me the fidgets to look. Safer to eat from his three hands. Tear it limb from limb, second nature to him, born with a silver knife in his mouth. That's witty, I think. Or no, silver means born rich, born with a knife. But then the illusion is lost. An ill-girt server gathered sticky, clattering plates. Rock, the head bailiff, standing at the bar, blew the foamy crown from his tankard. Well up, it splashed yellow near his boot. A diner, knife and fork upright, elbows on table, ready for a second helping, stared towards it. Stared towards the food lift across his stained square of newspaper. Other chap telling him something with his mouth full. Sympathetic listener. Table talk. I munched hum mun do unchester monk on bunch day. Ha? Huh? Did you, Faith? Mr. Bloom raised two fingers doubtfully to his lips. His eyes said, Not here. Don't see him. Out. I hate dirty eaters. He backed towards the door. Get a light snack and Davy Burns. Stop gap. Keep me going. Had a good breakfast. Roast and mashed here. Pint of stout. Every fellow for his own tooth and nail. Gulp, grub, gulp, gob stuff. He came out into clear air and turned back towards Grafton Street. Eat or be eaten. Kill. Kill. Suppose that communal kitchen years to come, perhaps, all trotting down with porringers and tommy cans to be filled. Devour contents in the street. John Howard Parnell, example, the provost of Trinity. Every mother's son don't talk of your provost and provost of Trinity. Provost of Trinity, women and children, cabmen, priests, parsons, field marshals, archbishops. From Aylesbury Road, Clyde Road, Artisans' Dwellings, North Dublin Union, Lord Mayor in his gingerbread coach, Old Queen in a bath chair. My plate's empty. After you, with our incorporated drinking cup, like Sir Philip Crampton's fountain. Rub off the microbes with your handkerchief. Next chap rubs on a new patch with his. Father O'Flynn would make hairs of them all, have rows of all, the, have rows all the same, all for number one. Children fighting for the scrapings of the pot, want a soup pot as big as the Phoenix Park, harpooning flitches and hind quarters out of it. Hate people all around you. City Arms Hotel, table d'hote, she called it. Soup, joint and sweet. Never know whose thoughts you're chewing. Then who'd wash up all the plates and forks? Might be all feeding on tabloids that time. Teeth getting worse and worse. After all, there's a lot in that vegetarian fine flavor of things from the earth. Garlic, of course, it stinks after Italian organ grinders, crisp of onions, mushrooms, truffles. Pain to the animal, too. Pluck and draw fowl. Wretched brutes there at the cattle market, waiting for the pole-axe to split their skulls open. Moo! Poor trembling calves, meh, staggering bob, bubble and squeak, butcher's buckets wobbly lights, give us that brisket off the hook, plup, raw head and bloody bones, flayed glass-eyed sheep hung from their haunches, sheep snouts, bloody papered sniveling nose jam on sawdust, top and lashers going out, don't maul them pieces, young one. Hot, fresh blood they prescribe for decline. Blood always needed, insidious. Lick it up, smoking hot, thick, sugary, famished ghosts. Ah, I'm hungry. He entered Davy Burns, moral pub. He doesn't chat. Stands a drink now and then, but in leap year once in four. Cashed a check for me once. What will I take now? He drew his watch. Let me see. Shandy Gaff? Hello, Bloom, Nosy Flynn said from his nook. Hello, Flynn. How's things? Tip top. Let me see. I'll take a glass of burgundy and. Let me see. Sardines on the shelves. Almost taste them by looking. Sandwich? 
Ham and his descendants mustard and bread there. Potted meats. What is home without plum trees potted meats? Incomplete. What a stupid ad. Under the obituary notices they stuck it. All up a plum tree. Dignam's potted meat. Cannibals wood with lemon and rice. White missionary too salty, like pickled pork. Expect the chief consumes the parts of honor. Ought to be tough from exercise. His wives in a row to watch the effect. There was a right royal old nigger who ate or something the somethings of the Reverend Mr. McTrigger. With it an abode of bliss. Lord knows what concoction. Calls, moldy tripes, windpipes, faked and minced up. Puzzle find the meat. Kosher. No meat and milk together. Hygiene that was what they call now. Yom Kippur, fast spring cleaning of inside. Peace and war depend on some fellow's digestion. Religions, Christmas turkeys and geese. Slaughter of innocents. Eat, drink, and be merry. Then casual wards full after. Heads bandaged. Cheese digests all but itself. Mighty cheese. Have you a cheese sandwich? Yes, sir. Like a few olives, too, if they had them. Italian, I prefer. Good glass of burgundy, take away that. Lubricate. A nice salad, cool as a cucumber. Tom Kerning can dress. Puts gusto into it. Pure olive oil. Millie served me that cutlet with a, spring of with a sprig of parsley. Take one Spanish onion. God made food. The devil the cooks. Deviled crab. Wife well? Quite well, thanks. A cheese sandwich, then. Gorgonzola, have you? Yes, sir. Nosy Flynn sipped his grog. Doing, a doing any singing these times? Look at his mouth. Could whistle in his own ear. Flap ears to match. Music. Knows as much about it as my coachman. Still better tell him does no harm. Free ad. She's engaged for a big tour end of this month. You may have heard, perhaps. No. Oh, that's the style. Who's getting it up? The curate served. How much is it? Seven D, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bloom cut his sandwich into slender strips. Mr. McTrigger, easier than the dreamy, creamy stuff. His five hundred wives had the time of their lives. Mustard, sir? Thank you. He studded under each lifted strip yellow blobs. Their lives. I have it. It grew bigger and bigger and bigger. Getting it up, he said. Well, it's like a company idea, you see. Part shares and part profits. Hey, now I remember, Nosy Flynn said, putting his hand in his pocket to scratch his groin. Who is this was telling me? Isn't Blazes Boylan mixing up in it? A warm shock of air, heat of mustard, launched on Mr. Bloom's heart. He raised his eyes and met the stare of a bilious clock. Two. Pub clock five minutes fast. Time going on. Hands moving. Two. Not yet. His midriff yearned then upward, sank within him, yearned more longly, longingly. Wine. He smells sipped the cordial juice and, bidding his throat strongly to speed it, set his wine glass delicately down. Yes, he said. He's the organizer in point of fact. No fear, no brains. Nosy Flynn snuffled and scratched, flea having a good square meal. He had a slice of luck, Jack Mooney was telling me, over that boxing match Myler Keogh won against that soldier in the Portobello barracks. By God, he had the little kipper down in the ca County Carlo, he was telling me. Hope that dewdrop doesn't come down into his glass. No, snuffled it up. For near a month, man, before it came off, sucking duck eggs by God till further orders. Keep him off the booze, see? Oh, by God, Blazes is a hairy chap. Davy Byrne came forward from the hind bar in tuck-stitched shirt sleeves, cleaning his lips with two wipes of his napkin. Herring's blush, whose smile upon each feature plays with such and such replete. Too much fat on the parsnips. And here's himself and pepper on him, Nosy Flynn said. Can you give us a good one for the gold cup? I'm off that, Mr. Flynn, Davy Byrne answered. I never put anything on a horse. You're right there, Nosy Flynn said. 
Mr. Bloom ate his strips of sandwich, fresh clean bread with relish of disgust pungent mustard, the feety savor of green cheese. Sip, sips of his wine soothed his palate. Not logwood, that. Tastes fuller this weather with the chill off. Nice quiet bar. Nice piece of wood in that counter. Nicely planed, like the way it curves there. I wouldn't do anything in not. I wouldn't do anything at all in that line, Davy Byrne said. It ruined many a man, the same horses. Vintner's sweepstake. License for the sale of beer, wine, and spirits for consumption on the premises. Heads I win, tails you lose. True for you, Nosey Flynn said. Unless you're in the know. There's no straight sport going now. Lenehan gets some good ones. He's giving a scepter today. Zinfandel's the favorite. Lord Howard de Walden's won at Epsom. Morney Cannon is riding him. I could have got seven to one against St. Amant a fortnight before. That's so, Davy Burton said. He went towards the window, and, taking up the petty cash book, scanned its pages. I could, faith, Nosey Flynn said, snuffling. That was a rare bit of horse flesh. St. Frusquin was her sire. She won in a thunderstorm. Rothschild's filly, with wading in her ears, blue jacket and yellow cap. Bad luck to Big Ben Dollard and his John O'Gaunt. He put me off it, eh? He drank resignedly from his tumbler, running his fingers down the flutes. Eh, he said, sighing. Mr. Bloom, champing standing, looked upon his sigh. Nosy numbskull. Will I tell him that horse Lenehan? He knows already. Better let him forget. Go and lose more. Fool and his money. Dewdrop coming down again. Cold nose he'd have kissing a woman. Still, they might like that. Prickly beards they like. Dogs cold noses. Old Mrs. Rorden with the rumbling stomach sky terrier in the City Arms Motel. Molly fondling him in her lap. Oh, the big doggy bow, wow, wowsy, wowsy. Wine soaked and softened, rolled, pith of bread, mustard a moment, mawkish cheese. Nice wine it is. Taste it better because I'm not thirsty. Bath, of course, does that. Just a bite or two. Then about six o'clock I can. Six. Six. Time will be gone by then. She. Mild fire of wine kindled his veins. I wanted that badly. Felt so off color. His eyes unhungrily saw shelves of tins, sardines, gaudy lobster's claws, all the odd things people pick up for food. Out of shells, periwinkles with a pin, off trees, snails out of the ground the French eat, out of the sea with bait on a hook. Silly fish learn nothing in a thousand years. If you didn't know risky putting anything in your mouth. Poisonous berries, Johnny Majories, roundness you think good, gaudy color warns you off. One fellow told another, and so on. Try it on the dog first. Let on by the smell or the look. Tempting fruit. Ice cones. Cream. Instinct. Orange groves, for instance, need artificial irrigation. Blibature tross. Yes, but what about oysters? Unslightly, like a clot of phlegm. Filthy shells, devil to open them, too. Who found them out? Garbage, sewage they feed on, fizz and red bank oysters. Effect on the sexual. Aphrodis. He was in the red bank this morning. Was he oysters old fish at table? Perhaps he young flesh in bed. No June has no R, no oysters. But there are people like things high. Tainted game. Jugged hair. First catch your hair. Chinese eating eggs, fifty years old, blue and green again. Dinner of thirty courses, each dish harmless might mix inside. Idea for a poison mystery. That Archduke Leopold, was it no, yes, or was it Otto, one of those Habsburgs? Or who was it used to eat the scruff off his own head? Cheapest lunch in town. Of course aristocrats, then the others copy to be in the fashion. Milly, too, rock oil and flour. Raw pastry, I like myself. Half the catch of oysters they throw back in the sea to keep up the price. Cheap. No one would buy. Caviar. Do the grand. Hawk and green glasses. Swell blowout. Lady this. Powdered bosom pearls. The elite. Creme de la creme. 
They want special dishes to pretend there. Hermit with a patter... Hermit with a platter of pulse keep down the stings of the flesh. Know me, come eat with me. Royal sturgeon, high sheriff, coffee, the butcher. Write to venisons of the forest from his ex. Send him back the half of a cow. Spread I saw down in the master of the rolls kitchen area. White-hatted chef like a rabbi. Combustible duck. Curly cabbage a la duchesse de parme. Just as well to write it on the bill of fares. So you can know what, you've e what you've eaten. Too many drugs spoil the broth. I know it myself. Dosing it with Edward's desiccated soup. Geese stuffed silly for them. Lobsters boiled alive. Do take some ptarmigan. Wouldn't mind being a waiter in a swell hotel. Tips. Evening dress. Half-naked ladies. May I tempt you to a little more filleted lemon sole, Miss Dubedat? Yes, do, bedad. And she did, bedad. Who cannot name, I expect, to that. A Miss Dubedat lived in Killiney, I remember. Du, de la French. Still, it's the same fish, perhaps, old Mickey Hanlon of Moore Street ripped his... Ripped the guts out of making money, hand over fist, finger, and fish's gills, can't write his name on a check, think he was painting the landscape with his mouth twisted. Moo a kill a a chita, ha, ignorant as a kish of brogues, worth fifty thousand pounds. Stuck on the pane, two flies buzzed, stuck. Glowing wine on his palate, lingered, swallowed, crushing in the wine-press grapes of burgundy. Sun's heat it is, seems to a secret touch telling me memory, touching his sense moistened remembered, hidden under wild ferns on houth below us bay sleeping sky, no sound, the sky. The bay purple by the lion's head, green by drumleck, yellow-green towards Sutton, fields of undersea, the lines, faint brown and grass buried cities, pillowed on my coat she had her hair, Earwigs in the heather scrub, my hand under her nape. You'll toss me all. Oh, wonder! Cool, soft with ointments, her hand touched me, caressed. Her eyes upon me did not turn away. Ravished over her I lay, full lips full open, kissed her mouth. Yum! Softly she gave me in her mouth the seed cake, warm and chewed. Mawkish pulp her mouth had mumbled, sweet sour of her spittle. Joy, I ate it. Joy. Young life, her lips they gave me pouting. Soft, warm, sticky gum jelly lips. Flowers her eyes were. Take me, willing eyes. Pebbles fell, she lay still. A goat, no one. High on Ben Houth, rhododendrons, a nanny goat, walking shore-footed, dropping currants. Screened under ferns, she laughed, warm-folded. Wildly, I lay on her, kissed her. Eyes, her lips, her upstretched neck beating, woman's breasts full in her blouse of nuns veiling, fat nipples upright. Hot, I tongued her. She kissed me. I was kissed. All yielding, she tossed my hair. Kissed, she kissed me. Me, and me now. Stuck, the flies buzzed. His downcast eyes followed the silent veining of the oaken slab. Beauty, it curves. Curves are beauty. Shapely goddesses, Vino, Venus, Juno, curves the world admires. Can see them, library museum standing in the round hall. Naked goddesses. Aids to digestion. They don't care what a man looks. All to see. Never speaking. I mean to say to fellows like Flynn. Suppose she did Pygmalion in Galatia. What would she say first? Mortal, put you in your proper place. Quaffing nectar at mess with God's golden dishes all ambrosial. Not like a tanner lunch we have. Boiled mutton, carrots and turnips, bottles of allsop. Nectar, imagine it drinking electricity. God's food. Lovely forms of women, sculpted Junonian. Immortal lovely. And we stuffing food in one hole and out behind. Food, child, blood, dung, earth, food. 
have to feed it like stoking an engine. They have no, never looked. I'll look today. Keeper won't see. Bend down, let something drop, see if she... Dribbling a quiet message from his bladder came to go to do not to do there to do. A man and ready he drained his glass to the lees and walked. Two men, too, they gave themselves, manly conscience. Lay with men lovers, a youth enjoyed her, to the yard. With... When the sound of his boots had ceased, Davy Byrne said from his book, "'What is this he is? Isn't he in the insurance line?' "'He's out of that long ago,' Nosy Flynn said. "'He does canvassing for the freeman.' "'I know him well to see,' Davy Byrne said. "'Is he in trouble?' "'Trouble?' Nosy Flynn said. "'Not that I heard of. Why?' "'I noticed he was in mourning.' "'Was he?' Nosy Flynn says. "'So he was, Faith. I asked him how he was all at home. "'You're right, by God, so he was.' "'I never broached the subject,' David Byrne said he mainly. "'If I see a gentleman is in trouble that way, "'it only brings it up fresh in their minds.' "'It's not the wife, anyhow,' Nosy Flynn said. "'I met him the day before yesterday, "'and he, coming out of that Irish farm dairy John Wise Nolan's wife, "'has in Henry Street, with a jar of cream in his hand, "'taking it home to his better half. "'She's well nourished, I tell you.' "'Plover's on toast. "'And is he doing the freeman?' And is he doing for the freeman? David Byrne said. Nosy Flynn pursed his lips. He doesn't buy cream on the ads he picks up. You can make bacon of that. How so? Davy Byrne asked, coming from his book. Nosy Flynn made swift passages in the air with juggling fingers. He winked. He's in the craft, he said. Do you tell me so? David Byrne said. Very much so, Nosy Flynn said. Ancient, free, and accepted order. He's an excellent brother. Light, love, light, life, and love, by God. They give, him, they give him a leg up. I was told that by a... Well, I won't say who. Is that a fact? Oh, it's a fine order, Nosy Flynn said. They stick to you when you're down. I know a fellow was trying to get into it, but they're as close as damn it. By God, they did right to keep the woman out of it. David Byrne smiled, yawn, nodded all in one. Yuck! There was one woman, Nosy Flynn said, hid herself in a clock to find out what they do be doing. But be damned, they smelt her out and swore her in on the spot a master mason. That was one of the St. Ledgers of Donorel. David Byrne, sated after his yawn, said with tear-washed eyes, And is that a fact? Decent quiet man he is. I often saw him in here. "'and I never once saw him, you know, over the line.' "'God Almighty couldn't make him drunk,' Nosy Flynn said firmly. "'Slips off when the fun gets too hot. "'Didn't you see him look at his watch? "'Ah, you weren't there. "'If you ask him to have a drink, first thing he does, "'he outs with his watch to see what he ought to imbibe. "'Declare to God he does.' "'There are some like that,' Davy Byrne says. "'He's a safe man, I'd say.' "'He's not too bad,' Nosy Flynn said, snuffling it up. He's been known to put his hand down to help a fellow. Give the, f give the devil his due. Oh, Bloom has his good points, but there's one thing he'll never do. His hand scrawled a dry pen signature beside his grog. I know, Davy Byrne said. Nothing in black and white, Nosy Flynn said. Patty Leonard and Bantam Lyons came in. Tom Rochford followed, frowning, a planing hand on his claret waistcoat. "'Day, Mr. Byrne. "'Day, gentlemen.' "'They paused at the counter. "'Who's standing?' Patty Leonard asked. "'I'm sitting, anyhow,' Nosy Flynn answered. "'Well, what'll it be?' Patty Leonard asked. "'I'll take a stone ginger,' Bantam Lyons said. "'How much?' Patty Leonard cried. "'Since when, for God's sake? "'What's yours, Tom?' "'How was the main drainage?' Nosy Flynn asked, sipping.' For answer, Tom Rochford pressed his hand to his breastbone and hiccuped. "'Would I trouble you for a glass of fresh water, Mr. Byrne?' he said. "'Certainly, sir.' Patty Leonard eyed his ailmates. "'Lord love a duck,' he said. "'Look at what I'm standing drinks to. Cold water and ginger pop. Two fellows that could suck whiskey off a sore leg. He has some bloody horse up his sleeve for the gold cup. A dead snip.' 
Zinfandel, is it? Nosey Flynn asked. Tom Roachford split powder from a twisted paper into the water set before him. That cursed dyspepsia, he said before drinking. Bread soda is very good, Davy Byrne said. Tom Rochford nodded and drank. Is it Zinfandel? Say nothing, Bantam Lyons winked. I'm going to plunge five bob on my own. Tell us if you're worth your salt and be damned to you, Patty Leonard said. Who gave it to you? Mr. Bloom, on his way out, raising three fingers in greeting. So long, Nosey Flint said. The others turned. That's the ma man that gave it to me, Bantam Lyons whispered. Psh! Patty Leonard said with scorn. Mr. Burns, sir, we'll take two of your small Jamesons after that, and a stone ginger, Davy Byrne added civilly. Eh, Patty Leonard said, a sucking bottle for the baby. Mr. Bloom walked towards Dawson Street, his tongue brushing his teeth smooth. Something green it would have to be, spinach, say. Then, with those rontgen rays, searchlight you could. At Duke Lane, a ravenous terrier choked up a sick, knuckly cud on the cobblestones and lapped it with new zest. Surfeit. Returned with thanks, having fully digested the contents. First sweet, then savory. Mr. Bloom coasted warily. Ruminants. His second course. Their upper jaw they moved. Wonder if Tom Rutchford will do anything with that invention of his. "'wasting time explaining it to Flynn's mouth. "'Lean people, long mouths. "'Ought to be a hall or a place where inventors could go in and invent free. "'Of course then you'd have all the cranks pestering.' "'He hummed, prolonging in solemn echo the closes of the bars. "'Don Giovanni, a sinartico. Me invitasti. "'Feel better. Burgundy. Good pick-me-up. "'Who distilled first? Some chap in the blues. Dutch courage. That Kilkenny people in the National Library now, I must. Bare, clean, closet tools waiting in the window of William Miller, plumber. Turn back his thoughts. They could, and watch it all the, all the way down, swallow a pin sometimes, come out of the ribs years after, tour around the body, changing biliary ducts, spleens, squirting liver gastric juices, gastric juice coils of intestines like pipes. "'but the poor buffer would have to stand all the time "'with his inside entrails on show. "'Science. "'Ah, canarteco. "'What does that teco mean? "'Tonight, perhaps. "'Don Giovanni, thou hast me invited "'to come to supper tonight. "'The rum, the rum-dum. "'Doesn't go properly. "'Keys. Two months if I get to Nanetti, too. "'That'll be two pounds, ten, about two pounds, eight... Three hinds owes me two eleven. Prescott's dye works van over there. If I get Billy Prescott's ad, two fifteen. Five guineas about, on the pig's back. Could buy one of those silk petticoats for Molly, color of her new garters. Today. Today. Not think. Tour the south, then. What about English watering places? Brighton, Margate, peers by moonlight. Her voice floating out. Those lovely seaside girls. "'against John Long's a drowsing loafer, "'lounged in heavy thought, gnawing a crusted knuckle. "'Handyman wants job, small wages, will eat anything.' <coughs> "'Mr. Bloom turned at Gray's confectioner's window "'of unbought tarts and passed the Reverend Thomas Connellan's bookstore. "'Why I left the Church of Rome, bird's nest. "'Women run him.' They say they used to give pauper children soup to change to Protestants in the time of the potato blight. Society over the way Papa went, too, for the conversion of poor Jews. Same bait, why we left the Church of Rome. A blind stripling stood tapping the curbstone with a slender cane. No tram in sight. Wants to cross. Do you want to cross? Mr. Bloom asked. The, the blind stripling did not answer. His wall face frowned weakly. He moved his head uncertainly. "'You're in Dawson Street,' Mr. Bloom said. "'Molesworth Street is opposite. Do you want to cross? There's nothing in the way.' The cane moved out trembling to the left. Mr. Bloom's eye followed its line and saw again the dye-works van drawn up before Drago's, where I saw his brilliantined hair just when I was, 
horse drooping, driver in John Long's, slaking his droth. There's a van there, Mr. Bloom said, but it's not moving. I'll see you across. Do you want to go to the Molesworth Street? Yes, the stripling answered. South Frederick Street. Come, Mr. Bloom said. He touched the thin elbow gently, then took the limp, seeing hands to guide it forward. Say something to him. Better not do the condescending. They mistrust what you tell them. Pass a common r remark. The rain kept off. No answer. Stains on his coat. Slobbers his food, I suppose. Tastes all different for him. Have to be spoon-fed first. Like a child's hand, his hand, like Milly's was. Sensitive. "'Sizing me up, I dare say, from my hand. "'Wonder if he has a name. "'Van, keep his cane clear, clear of the horse's legs. "'Tired drudge, get his doze. "'That's right, clear. "'Behind a bull, in front of a horse. "'Thanks, sir. "'Knows I'm a man. "'Voice. "'Right now? First turn to the left. "'The blind stripling tapped the curbstone "'and went on his way, drawing his cane back, feeling again. Mr. Bloom walked behind the eyeless feet, a flat-cut suit of herringbone tweed. Poor young fellow! How on earth did he know that van was there? Must have felt it. See things in their forehead, perhaps. Kind of sense of volume. Weight or size of it. Something blacker than the dark. Wonder what he... Wonder would he feel it if something was removed. Feel a gap. Queer idea of Dublin he must have, tapping his way round by the stones. Could he walk in a bee-line if he hadn't that cane? Bloodless, pious face like a fellow going in to be a priest. Penrose, that was the chap's name. Look at all the things they can learn to do. Read with their fingers, tune pianos, or we are surprised they have any brains. Why we think a deformed person or a hunchback clever... "'if he says something we might say. "'Of course the other senses are more. "'Embroider, plate baskets. "'People ought to help. "'Work basket I could buy for Molly's birthday. "'Hates sewing, might take an objection. "'Dark men, they call them. "'Sense of smell must be stronger, too. "'Smells on all sides bunched together. "'Each street, different smell. "'Each person, too. "'Then the spring, the summer, smells.' tastes? They say you can't taste wines with your eyes shut or a cold in the head. Also smoke in the dark, they say, get no pleasure. And with a woman, for instance, more shame not seeing. And with a woman, for instance, more shameless not seeing. That girl passing the Stewart Institution, head in the air. Look at me, I have them all on. Must be strange not to see her. "'kind of a form in his mind's eye. "'The voice, temperatures, when he touches her with his fingers, "'must almost see the lines, the curves. "'His hands on her hair, for instance. "'Say it was black, for instance. "'Good, we call it black. "'Then passing over her white skin. "'Different feel, perhaps. "'Feeling of white. "'Post office. Must answer. "'Fag today. "'Send her a postal order, two shillings, half a crown.' "'Except my little present. "'Stationer's just here, too. "'Wait. Think it over.' "'With a gentle finger, he felt ever so slowly "'the hair combed back above his ears. "'Again. "'Fibers of fine, fine straw. "'Then gently his finger felt the skin of his right cheek. "'Downy hair there, too. "'Not smooth enough. "'The belly is the smoothest. "'No one about. "'There he goes into Frederick Street.' Perhaps to Levenston's dancing academy piano. Might be settling my braces. Walking by Doran's public house, he slid his hand between his waistcoat and trousers and, pulling aside his shirt gently, felt a slack fold of his belly. But I know it's whitey yellow. Want to try in the dark to see. He withdrew his hand and pulled his dress too. Poor fellow. Quite a boy. Terrible, really terrible. What dreams would he have, not seeing? Life, a dream for him. Where is the justice being born that way? All those women and children, excursion, bean-fest, burned and drowned in New York, holocaust, karma, they call that transmigration for sins you did in a past life, the reincarnation met him pike-hoses. D. 
Dear, dear, dear. Pity, of course, but somehow you can't cotton on to them some way. Sir Frederick Falconer going into the Freemasons' Hall, solemn as Troy, after his good lunch in Earlsfort Terrace, old legal cronies cracking a magnum, tales of the bench and assizes and annals of the blue coat school. I sentenced him to ten years. I suppose he'd turn his nose up at that stuff I drank. Vintage wine for them, the year marked on a dusty bottle. Has his own ideas of justice in the recorder's court. Well-meaning old man. Police charge sheets crammed with cases get their percentage manufacturing crime. Sends them to the right about. The devil on moneylenders. Gave Reuben J. a great straw calling. Now he's really what they call a dirty Jew. Power those judges have. Crusty old topers and wigs. Bear with a sore paw. And may the Lord have mercy on your soul. Hello, placard. Myrus Bazaar. His Excellency the Lord Lieutenant, 16th. Today it is, in aid of funds for Mercer's Hospital. The Messiah was first given for that. Yes, Handel. What about going out there, Ballsbridge? Drop in on keys. No use sticking to him like a leech. Wear out my welcome. Sure to know someone on the gate. Mr. Bloom came to Kildare Street. First, I must. Library. Straw hat in sunlight, tan shoes, turned up trousers. It is. It is. His heart quapped softly. To the right, museum, goddesses. He swerved to the right. Is it? Almost certain. Won't look. Wine in my face. Why did I? Too heady. Yes, it is. The walk. Not see. Get on. Making for the museum gate with long, windy steps, he lifted his eyes. Handsome building, Sir Thomas Dean designed. Not following me? N <clears throat> Didn't see me, perhaps. Light in his eyes. The flutter of his breath came forth in short sighs. Quick, cold statues, quiet there. Safe in a minute. No, didn't see me. After two, just at the gate. My heart! His eyes, beating, looked steadfastly at cream curves of stone. Sir Thomas Dean was the Greek architecture. Look for something, I. His hasty hand went quick into a pocket, took out red, unfolded agendeth nataeum. Where did I? Busy looking. He thrust back quick agendath. Afternoon, she said. I am looking for that. Yes, that. Try all pockets. Hanker. Freeman. Where did I? Ah, yes. Trousers. Potato. Purse. Where? Hurry, walk quietly. Moment more. My heart. His hand looking for the where did I put found in his hip pocket. Soap lotion have to call tepid paper stuck. Ah, soap. There I, yes. Gate. Safe. End of chapter 8